In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Chelsea's Deo. Let us pray. 
O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was a scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with the scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord.
Know that the Lord is God. He made us, he is we are. His people, the flock he tends. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord is Lord, the Lord is kindness. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Deacons must be dignified, not deceitful, not addicted to drink, nor greedy for sordid gain, holding fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Moreover, they should be tested first then, if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. Deacons may be married only once and must manage their children and their households well. Thus, those who serve well as deacons gain good standing and much confidence in their faith in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. According to John. Jesus said. 
Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those who are to be ordained deacons come forward. Tyler Allen Carter. Present. Jason Owen Fox. Present. Michael Robert Harmony. Present. David Alan Johnston. Present. Most Reverend Father. Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon those, the recommendation of those concerned with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. My dear friends in Christ, I welcome you to this Church of St. Paul the Apostle. In a special way, I welcome the parents, family members, and friends of the men to be ordained, as well as those who have guided them through their seminary formation, to bring them to this day when they will enter the clerical state as ordained deacons. Tyler, Jason, Michael, and David. I know how momentous this day is in your lives, and we give thanks to God for you and for your self-offering. In my life as a bishop, today is also special, as your ordinations will be my first. In a few moments, Father Hahn, well, actually just a few moments ago, Father Hahn asked, 
Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate, to which I asked in response, do you know them to be worthy? And he answered, having consulted with the people of God and testifying on their behalf, in the affirmative, when these men are chosen, that is, elected, everyone here said, thanks be to God. This ancient ritual reflects the practice going back to apostolic times, when the apostles searched for men of good repute, filled with wisdom and the Holy Spirit to serve as deacons. It was on those seven original men that the apostles laid hands. Now, as these men journey toward the priesthood, they must have the confidence of the people. As a church that walks together, as Pope Francis says, they have both candidate and people embarked on the same journey toward heaven. They are on the same ship, share the same risk and the same security. The people themselves must feel that their highest interest, their salvation, is in hands they can trust. The deacon and the priest must have the respect of the people. In days gone by at weddings, Anglican weddings, ministers used to say, if anyone has any objection, speak now or forever hold your peace. What if we were to ask, if anyone has anything against this candidate, let him come forward in the presence of God and say it. Perhaps, if that were the case, our candidates might fear the verdict. <laughs> no one of us is perfect, but we must have the respect of the people. Virtue is one thing. Reputation is another. In our second reading, we heard the words of Paul to Timothy. Deacons must be dignified, not deceitful, not addicted to drink, not greedy for sordid gain, holding fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. Moreover, they should be tested first. Then if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. Your seminary formators, the people of God in the Diocese of Columbus, have tested you, and God be praised. You have passed, which brings you here. They testify that they can trust you and in the future will entrust themselves to you. My brothers, the church today needs men of integrity, men to whom the people can entrust their consciences. Be those men. Be men of virtue and good reputation. If for some reason someone should slander you, it occasionally happens to priests, know that in this you share in the Master's cross. But be aware of who you are, Fragile servants, called and chosen for greatness. In the homily for ordination provided in the ritual book itself, the faithful are invited to carefully consider the nature of the ministerial rank to which they, our brothers, shall be raised. Before the reforms of the council, the words were addressed to the candidates, and instead of ministerial rank, the words were exalted rank. It is an exalted rank to be a deacon. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will help the bishop and his priests in the ministries of the word, the altar, and of charity, showing themselves to be the servants of all. As ministers of the altar, they will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, and distribute the body and blood of the Lord. Through the ministry at the altar, they will also be preparing to be the ones who in union with Christ, the high priest, will one day offer the sacrifice. As ministers of the word, they will exhort believers and unbelievers alike and instruct them in holy doctrine, presiding over public prayer, including the liturgy of the hours. They will administer baptism, assist at marriages, bring viaticum to the dying, and conduct funerals. As ministers of the, of the word, dear brothers, you must be like Stephen, the proto-martyr, who bore witness to the Lord's death and resurrection in his charismatic preaching, 
in his forgiveness of his enemies, and in his hope of heaven. As a herald of the gospel, you must be like Philip the deacon, of whom we heard in our first reading from Acts. The church was persecuted and scattered, yet the word went forth in the power of the Spirit. Philip first went to Samaria and brought joy to the people there, bringing healing and casting out the evil one. They were attentive to the word of life that he offered, and they watched his gestures. Next, the Spirit of God led him into the desert, where he encountered the Ethiopian eunuch, reading the book of the prophet Isaiah, who inquired whether this pointed to the writer, to the prophet, or to someone else. Philip the deacon pointed him to Jesus. He brought him to faith in Jesus and led him to the waters of life. And then Philip went on to proclaim the good news elsewhere and bring joy to other people. Despite opposition and persecution, the word of God went forth. Even today, the word of God must go forth, for it brings life, and we are in a battle between the culture of death and the culture of life. The proclamation went forth and was successful ultimately because it was a spirit-driven proclamation. In the prayer of consecration in the rite of ordination, there are some words that are in all caps in the ritual book, which is sort of like shouting them. These are the words that Pope Pius XII declared to be the essential formula. Send forth the Holy Spirit upon them, O Lord, we pray, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of ministry. A spirit-driven event. The bishop's imposition of hands along with these essential words produce a new infusion of the Holy Spirit into the souls of those to be ordained. The Holy Spirit, if you will, takes possession of your lives. You are dedicated to God, given a power to serve as a deacon. You are given strength to resist the devil and are given the sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the, min the work of ministry even in times of suffering and persecution. Amongst the gifts you will be given is the gift of fortitude, to be strong in the ministry. During Easter, we remember the transformative power of the Spirit in the lives of the apostles and in the men chosen as deacons. From cowards who fled in fear, they were transformed by the Spirit after Pentecost into bold witnesses. They were an unstoppable force for goodness, for truth, and for life. Consecrated by the laying on of hands, passed down from the apostles, and bound more closely to the service of the altar, these four men will carry out a ministry of charity in the name of the bishop. In all these duties, let them act with the help of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in such a way that you, the people of God, recognize them as disciples of him who did not come to be served, but to serve. Yes, this is an exalted ministry, inasmuch as the ministry is a ministry of service. When we carry out the ministry of the word, it is not ourselves that we proclaim, but Jesus Christ and him crucified, who rose from the dead, the word of life. In the ministry of the altar, we do not draw attention to ourselves, but to him who lies upon the altar. To paraphrase St. Bernard of Clairvaux, the greatness of our ministry consists in serving for the sake of Jesus. Serving for the sake of Jesus. This is true greatness. Moreover, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. The apostles vied at one point for first place. John and James wanted to sit one at his right, one at his left. But the Lord reminded them, you know how it is among the Gentiles who claim to bear authority and lord it over others, and those who are great among them make the most of their power. But with you, it must be otherwise. Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be the last and slave of all. Furthermore, 
Jesus gave his disciples an example of this humble service to which you men will be called. When at the Last Supper, he who was master and teacher washed the feet of the twelve, even the feet of Judas, whom he knew would betray him. In this he endowed the service of the apostolate for all time with a divine nobility. Through the power of the Holy Spirit and the laying on of hands, you will be made servants, not only of God, but of your brothers and sisters. Today, as you enter the clerical state, God is beginning something new in each of you. But at the end of your days upon this earth, we hope that Christ says to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Today, you will be vested in the dalmatic. Some of you may notice that as the bishop, even I wear the dalmatic. The dalmatic is a symbol of service. Thus, when the bishop performs the mandatum on Holy Thursday, he removes the chasuble, but not his dalmatic. He is always Christ the servant. And just as with other liturgical vestments, there is a prayer that accompanies vesting in the dalmatic. In due me domine indumento salutis et vestimento letitiae, et dalmatica justitiae circunda me semper. Clothe me, O Lord, with the garment of salvation and the vestment of gladness, and encompass me always with the dalmatic of justice. This prayer makes clear allusion to a passage from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Using nuptial imagery to describe the new life of the restored Jerusalem, the prophet writes, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. The dalmatic should remind you of a new life and renewal, and should be a reminder of the love which the Lord Jesus has for each of you. He has clothed you with the garments of salvation. He has covered you with the robe of righteousness or justice. Still, as disciples and ministers, you are called to go beyond justice, to true charity. At the Last Supper, Jesus gave us both the sacrament of charity and an example of charity. Beloved sons, you are to be raised to the order of deacons. The Lord himself has given you an example. The justice he himself has done, so also you should do. In the old rite of ordination, the bishop specifically addressed the candidates, saying, Consider well to what high rank in the church you are ascending, for the deacon must serve. It is a high rank, a high task to be of lowly and humble service. If you want to ascend, then the only way is to make yourself low. And if you want to climb, then I suggest that the only thing you climb is the wood of the cross. And so as deacons, that is, as ministers of Jesus Christ, who appeared in the midst of the disciples as one who serves, do the will of God in charity from the heart. Serve others with joy as you would serve the Lord, since in fact, no one can serve two masters. Look upon all impurity and greed as serving false gods. Just as in baptism, there is a threefold renunciation of Satan and a threefold profession in the triune God. So, in the rite of ordination, you also must give your consent. You must hand yourself over, make a commitment, be dedicated to God and His church. Your will and no one else's is required. Your offering. Since you present yourselves for the order of the diaconate of your own free choice, you must be like those once chosen apostles for the ministry of charity, men of good reputation, full of wisdom, and the Holy Spirit. You will exercise your ministry in the celibate state. Celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and an incentive to it, as well as a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. Amen, amen, I say to you, 
unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies or remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. For urged on by a sincere love of Christ the Lord and living in this state with total dedication, you will cling more readily to Christ with an undivided heart. You will devote yourselves with greater freedom to the service of God and others, and you will serve single-mindedly the work of spiritual rebirth. Firmly planted and grounded in faith, show yourselves without blemish and beyond reproach before God and others, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and the stewards of God's mysteries. Do not allow yourselves to be turned away from the hope of the gospel, which you must not only hear, but also serve. Hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience and express by your actions the word of God which your lips proclaim so that the Christian people brought to life by the Spirit may become a pure offering accepted by God. And so that you yourselves, when you go out to meet the Lord on the last day, may be able to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Dear sons, before you proceed to the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the ministry of the church through the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge with humble charity the office of the diaconate so as to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle says, and to proclaim this faith by word and deed, according to the gospel and the church's tradition. Those of you who are prepared to embrace the celibate state, do you resolve to keep this commitment perpetually as a sign of the dedication of your life to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in service to God and others? Do you resolve to guard and increase the spirit of prayer proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and the circumstances of your life to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed the whole world. Do you resolve to conform your manner of life always to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you will handle at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. <coughs> may 
May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that God, the Almighty Father, will in his mercy pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom he is pleased to receive into the sacred order of the diaconate. Lord, have mercy. and St. Dominic. Pray for us. St. Francis Xavier. Pray for us. St. Philip Neri. Pray for us. St. John Vianney. Pray for us. St. Catherine of Siena. of Jesus. Pray for us. Saint Margaret of Scotland. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Yes. 
Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you, ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our Sanctify and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Comfort all the troubled and afflicted with your mercy. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and kindly accompany with your help what we are about to do by virtue of our office. Sanctify with your blessing those whom in our judgment we believe are worthy to be offered for the exercise of sacred ministries, through Christ our Lord. Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, while remaining unchanged 
you make all things new, and setting all things in order with everlasting providence, you make due provision for every age through your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that your church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of her members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. As once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve your name. Thus, in the first days of your church, your son's apostles, led by the Holy Spirit, appointed seven men of good repute to help them in the daily ministry, so that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and pre the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. Look favorably also on these, your servants, we pray, O Lord, whom we humbly dedicate to serve at your holy altars in the office of the diaconate. Send forth the Holy Spirit upon them, O Lord, we pray, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of the ministry. May every evangelical virtue abound in them, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your precepts shine forth in their conduct, that by the example of their manner of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a good conscience, may they remain firm and steadfast in Christ so that imitating your Son on earth, who came not to be served, but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive.
Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that, offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry to the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, 
be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph herself, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance, through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and to eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and a chalice of everlasting salvation. 
be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask O Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar received the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctified them, filled them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, We pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. And with your spirit. With your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me offer a word of thanks to all who have helped make this liturgy so beautiful. First, I thank Father Jonathan Wilson and the good people of St. Paul the Apostle Church who have hosted us once again. We thank them for their greatness and their hospitality. I also want to thank uh, the choir from St. Joseph's Cathedral for helping us to pray well and they sang beautifully in glory of God. I want to thank our ordinands uh, for putting themselves forward for this service, as well as all our other deacons here present uh, who continue in this great ministry of charity. I thank in a special way the seminary formators here present with us, especially Father Steve Besso, uh, the rector of the Pontifical College Josephinum, and all the uh, faculty members who are present, uh, as well as Father Kiley, the rector of Pope John the 23rd uh, Seminary and the faculty and staff and administration there who have accompanied these young men to this great day in their lives. I also want to thank the family members and friends, especially the parents of these uh, new deacons. I was thinking during the Mass of Hannah, who had longed for a child, and then God gave her a child, and then she came up to the temple to give that child, who would be the prophet Samuel, back to the Lord for service in his temple. Thank you for your offering of your sons in service of the church. To one and all, I'm sure I'm forgetting some people, our seminarians, our servers, I thank you for praying with us and for helping us to grow as the Diocese of Columbus. Less than a year ago, I was ordained and I said evangelization and vocations. And so today we experience in the flesh the fruit of so many prayers and we look forward to the great things these young men will do a little more than a year from now as priests. The Lord be with you. for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he, who has entrusted you with, the preach with preaching the gospel of Christ, help you as you live according to his word, to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he, who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries, make you imitators of his Son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen.